Hi everyone, this is Rosa Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here with a new mini album tutorial for JS Hobbies and Crafts. And today we're going to be making a gatefold cascade mini album. So I have this idea on my head and I hope it comes as good as I want it to be. Um, so I think it's always fun to create something different, something new and something simple so we can all try it. Um, I am going to list on the description box down below all the supplies that we're gonna need for this tutorial. Um, so part one is going to be the construction and part two will be the embellishing. Hopefully I can keep it on just those uh, two parts. We might need a part three because I always just um, take too long explaining, I guess. Um, so we're going to be using the Chow Vela papers, which is amazing. This collection is called Woodland. Again, I will link also the, the store where you can find everything that you need. Um, so let's get started. So we're going to start by cutting our chipboard. Now our album is going to measure 9 by 7. So we are going to cut the first piece at 9 by 7 which is going to be for uh, the back of the album, the back base, just like this. And I always like to do both sides. It just makes it a lot easier to cut. Now this remaining piece that you have measures five, which is perfect. So we're gonna need, I won't, I'm gonna write all these on um, the screen here so you guys know exactly what to cut. So we're gonna need a nine by seven, nine by five. Then I'm going to need a nine by two. Okay, let me cut this at nine again. Turn this around nine here again okay so now we are going to need a two just right here like this this is a small little piece that is going to be for the front and i'll show you right now how we're gonna lay this out and then we are going to need two of three and a half so nine by three and a half and these ones are going to be for the spines so let me put that like so so this gatefold is going to fa have only four sheets or four signatures but it is going to have a large gusset and i'll show you what i mean by cascade because i want my pages to all be different sizes okay so i have all the pieces that i need and now let me show you how we're gonna put these together so we have the base which is the nine by seven then we are going to do the two spines three and a half and then on your left side we are gonna have the five the nine by five like so and i hope my screen is big enough oh yeah i think if i move it this way you can see all the pieces and the last one is going to be the little two inches just like so so now we're going to put these together using some tiebeck so i'm going to cut like probably about two inch pieces of tiebeck to join these pieces together okay so i have my four pieces of nine by two of my tiebeck and Tyvek is really good because it will keep your album strong and this material is very durable. Now, if you are not able to find Tyvek, you can also do this step just using regular cardstock. The point is for you to reinforce these uh, hinges, you know, before we do the whole binding. So I'm just going to add some glue here and make sure that in between the two pieces of chipboard we have about like an eighth of an inch gap i think i'm running out of glue um, just something like that so see how i have about an eighth of an inch now you also want probably a little ruler just to make sure these are even and they're not moving okay so now i'm just gonna place my tie back right in here like so 
okay and then I will do the same for all of these connections so I'm just gonna do some glue on both sides make sure we give one eighth of an inch or so space in between them and then I'm gonna place my Tyvek like so okay so I'm gonna do the same with the next two so now we have one large piece like this and when you turn it around you should see the even spacing in between them so now I'm gonna use three pieces of cardstock and I'm gonna join them together using my score tape now this is the one quarter inch score tape and I'm just going to cut this right here and I'll do the same on this one just like that okay so now I'm just gonna peel off the tape on here and place this next one right on top of this tape and then I take this off I think you can also use glue for this step and here we go place that just like so okay so now we have these three pieces and now we can bring back our um, large piece that we have here and we're gonna place it right on the center of everything and I think you can see it's a little bit too large for my screen but um, so I'm going to fold this on the side where we have the tie back and I'm just gonna add some of my score tape so I'm just gonna use this large um, one inch score tape that I have here on my stash uh, you can also use glue for this step. I think glue will be much faster to do. Now, if you want to make sure that your cardstock is not going to wrinkle, either use the score tape or you can use this um, art glitter glue. This glue is really good because it won't wrinkle your paper and it's also really strong. So I'm adding this tape and I'm trying to stay away from the gaps, you know, the joints from each one of um, of the chipboard pieces just because sometimes when you add the tape on that area it makes a weird noise when you're opening and closing your album so I definitely try to stay away from that as much as you can so I'm just gonna continue adding my tape here okay so I have all my core tape and I'm just pressing it making sure there's no air bubbles and it's good press down so now i'm just going to peel off all of the tape so i have all the tape removed and now i'm just going to go ahead and place this down and center as much as you can and here we go perfect so now the next thing we're going to do is just bend the sides of the cardstock I'm just gonna bend them first without adding any tape and just kind of massaging it and making sure um, it is where you want it to be. It is a large piece, so you wanna take it a little bit slow. You don't want it to break in between. Okay, so once that we have it, once we have it down, then we can go ahead and give it a good press like so. Okay. And then we can go ahead and do the same for all the sides. So once we have all the sides kind of bent in place, I'm going to go to each corner and just take out a piece like so. And we are going to make sure that we are staying about an eighth of an inch away from the chipboard. You don't want to cut it right against the chipboard because then your chipboard is going to show. So I'm going to do the same to all the corners once I do that I'm going to use my score tape again and just add it on each side like so 
just like this to make sure this is gonna be nice and strong if you don't have a one inch tape like me i'm just using what i have on my stash trying to use it because really it, this one is only good for the binding but if you are to buy for tape i suggest you buy the three eighths of an inch because then you can also use this one for your hinges um but if you have this one then you just put one and then you can do glue on the inside as long as you have one piece of tape and i don't really suggest you do this with only glue just because if you're doing glue then glue tends to you know take it takes a second for it to set and dry so unless you're really like holding it until it's fully dry um just try to use a score tape if you have score tape okay so now i'm gonna do the same for this other side here now for the sides the shorter sides i'm also going to add my tape but before we peel off the tape and glue it we want to make sure that our corners are tucked in like so so they're not pointing out once we uh, put this down and then we can go ahead and close it and then we'll just do the same on the other side and finally the last thing we do with our binding is in between each one of these gaps we are going to mark the place where it's going to bend that way it's a lot easier for it to bend and by doing this step you prevent a lot of like air bubbles here because we're already giving it a location of where this cardstock is going to fold so we do it like this and we do it like that and this one as you can see will have the closure on the side instead of on the center and i think it's really fun so now let me show you what we're going to be using for the closure i'm using this antique brass um, closure also from the store you can find it at js hobbies and crafts and I, again i have all the links on the description box down below so this i think it's gonna look so so pretty with this closure I'm super excited but first we still have a couple other things to do before we add the closure so now let's start with the page construction so the first page is going to measure nine inches by six and a quarter and for that one you're also going to need a second piece that will measure ten by six and a quarter and we are going to score half an inch on each one of the sides here so you can do it this way or you can do half an inch and then you flip this around and do half an inch again so this is going to be the first page so then we're going to fold along our score lines like this and this is when we're going to use our 3 8 of an inch score tape and we are just going to place this on these little flaps like so you do one here like that and one on this other side just like so okay so then what i like to do is just peel off just a little bit of the tape on one of the sides and then i'm gonna place the second piece right on top and just make sure the corners on the left side are even and then we just press on the sticky side and remove the tape and then we flip to the other side and just remove the tape at this point all you gotta do is make sure this page is not bubble up so always keep your hand on the center and then press it down so the first page it's done it measures nine by six and a quarter now the second page is going to be one inch smaller so you're gonna need two pieces as well this one will measure eight by six and a quarter and the second one will be nine by six and a quarter and this second piece we're gonna score half an inch on each 
on each side and then we are going to just repeat the same steps fold the score lines and add the tape we're just gonna put it together like we did with the first one just like so and take off the tape on this side as well okay so now we have two pages now the third page it's going to be one inch smaller so you're gonna need a piece of seven by six and a quarter and a piece of eight by six and a quarter and we are going to do the same thing here score half an inch on each side and then we're just gonna join these two together here we go and now for the last piece we need a piece of six by six and a quarter and seven by six and a quarter so I'm gonna score along the seven inch side half an inch and half an inch again and then just join these two together like that so this piece is almost square one side will be a little bit smaller than the other so make sure that you have the right orientation when you put them together like this so here we have our four pages and they're all different sizes and that's what i mean by a cascade album because once we put this together i think it's gonna look really cool all right so now we're gonna work on the interaction for each one of these uh, signatures before we put it in the album so i'm gonna start with the small one so for the first one here i'm going to use some of the scrap pieces from the page construction that we just did so i'm gonna use two and i'm gonna cut both of these at six inches just like that and I'm going to score half an inch on each one of these so let me move this here so I'm going to score along um, the short side so let me grab my score tool and just do half an inch on the shorter side and this measures about five inches so your scraps should measure about the same the same size so i'm just going to fold along the score lines and add my tape and then make sure that your openings are on each one of the sides and we are just going to add one on the top and one on the bottom now for this step you could also just use your glue and I actually find it a little bit faster to work with my glue on this step. So I'm just gonna be doing that and adding the flaps, one on the top, just like this. And this one on the bottom. And we are going to make sure that once we place the bottom it is straight or aligned with the one that we just did on the top just like this so we have this opening top and bottom but because this is because this is our first page the first thing that you see when we open our album I always like to make that page a little bit more interesting and special so i'm going to do like a little gate full opening so i'm gonna grab two more of my scrap pieces and i'm also going to cut these at six inches by three and five eighths now if you um, don't know exactly which one's five eighths that will be three and a half and one eight after that so that always helps me to see where exactly I'm cutting okay so three and five eighths so now for this I'm going to score half an inch again on each one of the sides so along the three and five eighths we are going to score at half and I'm going to do the same here half. okay so remember the five eighths will be three and a half 
plus the next line over here. So you will see that on your scoreboard. And I'm going to again to fold along this score line like this. And now these two pieces are going to be right on each one of the sides, creating a little gate fold on your first page. So again, I'm just going to do this with my glue. Just like that. And if you want to make sure that you're not gluing on top of this, just open it for a little bit. Just place this one down. Okay, just like so. And then we do this next one. And again, I'm going to place it down. Just like this. Okay. And now we're going to open it and we're going to close these two and close these two. So now we have a little gatefold on the front. And for the back, I'm just going to create a fun pocket using another one of my scrap pieces. So now for the pockets, I'm going to cut this piece at seven and a quarter by three and a half. Okay, and I'm just going to score half an inch on three sides. So I'm going to do half an inch here, half an inch from the end, and then we're going to do half an inch on one of the sides and I'm just going to grab my scissors and cut this little corner like so to create this pocket. So it always helps to cut the corners that way your corners are not super bulky. So it's nice and flat when they go on the page. So also when you fold this down Make sure these are not overlapping. See how mine are not overlapping? If they are overlapping, they just cut a little bit more into it. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the page again and I'm going to place this pocket. Glue is always the best way to add your pockets because you have a little bit of time to adjust and, and you know, move it, make sure it's even compared to the tape, the tape, once you put it down, you can't really move it too much. So here we go. So I am just gonna hold this for a quick second and we are done with the first page. Now let's work on the second page. Now remember the second page measures seven inches. So I'm gonna use a new piece of cardstock and just cut long ways like this at seven inches and then I'm going to cut this in half which is five and a half so I have these two pieces and I'm going to score each one of these at half an inch so I will do one and two Just very simple, easy layouts. Um, I think that if you guys have been following my tutorials long enough, you can probably create, have fun creating your own layouts. Um, so my point when I do these tutorials is just not guide you um, step by step, but also kind of help you discover how we create these pages. So if you wanna make your own layout, all you really gotta remember is you add half an inch more, whatever you want your opening to be, to create this little flap. So if you wanted to make your flap on the top, then instead of making this seven, you make it seven and a half. So you can always just have fun and create um, your own little page designs. I have the most fun just creating the page designs because I, I do have fun making different pages um, I don't know it's just 
is the, my favorite part of making mini albums is making these page designs. I try to always make them a little bit different. So for this page, we are gonna have just an opening to both sides like this. And we're gonna come back and add magnets and all the fun closures um, to this. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the back. For the back, I'm just going to grab another piece here and cut this at six and a quarter by seven and a quarter okay just like what I was saying um, and I'm going to score half an inch on one of these sides here and then I'm going to fold along the score line and just add this on the top now why I didn't do seven and a half is because I like to see the difference in between the flap opening and the base. I don't like them to be exactly like um, on the same level because then I tend to forget there's an opening in there. You know, unless you want like a hidden, hidden page, you can do that. All right, so I'm gonna add to my glue and just place this along the top like so. Very, very simple layout, super easy to do. Okay, so now let's move on to the next page. So this next page measures eight inches high. So I'm going to cut my next piece of cardstock at eight inches and I'm going to do two here, just like so. And then I'm going to score both of these at five and 10, okay? So I'm gonna start with this one. I'll score five and then 10. And same thing on the second one. I'm gonna score five and 10. And then we're gonna fold just along the score lines. And I have this one inch here, which is gonna attach to the page. You can trim this to be half an inch if you like, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like so. So again, I'm gonna do the same for this one. Fold along the score line. And then I'm just gonna add these two to my base. So we have one like this. Actually, I'm gonna do this one here on this side. Not that it matters, it, it actually doesn't matter. They're both gonna open the same way. So I'm gonna start with the left, oh, I'm sorry, the right. Like this, and then I'm gonna do the same with this one on the other side, okay? Here we go. Another simple layout, um, but it gives your album a lot of interest because it will open like this and then you have a lot of room for pictures as well. And then we're gonna close this with a magnet. So now let's work on the back. The back I'm gonna start a new sheet and cut this at six inches just like so. So now this will measure six by eight and a half. And I'm going to score this piece again at half an inch, just like so. And I'm going to just bend this little flap. Now, before I add this into the page, I do wanna build a little bit of a waterfall in here. So for that, I'm going to cut a couple pieces of cardstock and I'm going to cut this at six inches, just like this, by four and a quarter. Okay, so six by four and a quarter, and I have 
four here and then the two remaining I'm also going to cut at six by four and a quarter and I think I should have enough layouts for this little waterfall so now the waterfall that I'm going to do I'm just going to score along the six inches or along the four and a quarter actually at half an inch okay so I'm gonna do this for all of them just like that and I'm making this size so I can maximize my cardstock now if you don't want to crop a lot of pictures um, and have like a four by six matting area then you will cut this page at four and a half which means you will probably use a little more cardstock um, and I actually don't mind the narrow pages because the pictures that I print out are usually like three by five they're small pictures okay so I'm just gonna finish up scoring here and now we're going to fold along the score lines for each one of these like so and then I'm gonna start building this waterfall now these we have the score piece that we just bent and put on the back and now we're just gonna start with the first one here and again I find it more convenient to just use glue for this step so I'm gonna just align these to the top press this down and then we're gonna open it and align the second one here okay so you want to make sure that you stay you know center on the sides like this okay I also like to close it a lot to make sure that it's looking nice so then I'm gonna open that one and continue building this waterfall okay so I have all the pieces of my waterfall it actually took a few more um, so I cut another sheet of paper for that now I'm gonna use one of my scrap pieces here and I'm gonna cut this at six and a half actually I'm gonna cut it at seven okay and I'm going to score one inch okay and this piece measures about two and a quarter if you want to know what the width is so I'm gonna fold along the score line here and I'm gonna open this waterfall and this is going to be the closure for my waterfall so now I'm going to add my glue here on this one inch and then just make sure it is centered on the bottom here so I'm just gonna eyeball this kind of like right there okay so we're gonna make sure that it's nice and tight and when we close our waterfall now we have this piece holding it back now I'm gonna go ahead and add some magnets magnets you can also find at the store js hobbies and crafts and i'm going to um, of course uh, leave a link on the description box below so i'm going to add just the first magnet kind of like right here and for my magnets i like to use my double-sided tape I, fi I find it much easier to work than glue because i don't have to wait for anything to dry so i think this is a little bit too big okay so i'm gonna place it right there and add my tape and then i'm going to place the second magnet there and i'm going to add another piece of tape and make sure my tape this time is has the sticky side up and place my magnets toss it back in here and now I can go ahead and close my waterfall 
and make sure this stays where it needs to go and here we go okay so now i am ready to add this whole waterfall into this page now i'm only going to glue on this flap like so because i also want this whole waterfall to open okay so now when we do these type of waterfalls um, i like to just decorate the first page and then leave everything else blank all you need really need is your pictures because you don't want to make this page extra heavy now i am gonna open this whole thing up and i'm also going to add magnets so this can stay nice and close so i'm gonna put one here and just cut a long piece of tape and then toss the second one in there and just put the sticky side up and close this whole thing just like so okay so here we go now we have um, this page done and we have one more to go For the last page i'm going to cut a piece at six and a quarter just like this and i'm going to cut this by eight okay six and a quarter by eight and i'm going to need two of those so i'm going to start with actually i could do six and a quarter here okay by eight okay so now i'm going to score again a half an inch along i'm gonna do this time along the eight inch okay so we're gonna do one and we are going to do two and so we are going to fold along the score lines one and two and then i'm going to use one of my scrap pieces like this and cut this piece at seven and a quarter okay so i'm going to be creating a little belly band here as well so i'm going to score at half an inch and half an inch okay so now we're ready to build this page i'm going to start with this piece just like this make sure this is fold really flat and i'm going to add my glue one here one there place this right on the center just like so create a cute little belly band and then we are going to use these two pieces one on the top like this Here we go and one on the bottom so I'll put this one down here like so okay so now just want to make sure this is nice and dry and that's how that page is going to look now we're gonna work on the back here okay because this is such a nice large page i want to take advantage of that and create more spaces for pictures so i'm going to cut the two sheets here at nine inches by six and a half okay just like so and now i'm going to score at half an inch again along the six and a half side just like this i'm gonna do the same for this one just like that and now i'm just gonna bend along my score line 
am going to add one on each side like we've done before so I'm just gonna add my glue place one here so now we have these nice large pages this opens to the side and then I'm gonna add another one on this other side and I love having large pages like this because then it's really easy to add your pictures in the album um, you can even collage small small pictures and you don't have to worry about cropping anything here we go so two large areas for pictures now after I add the paper I will probably add a different element here on the top but I think this is good for the base so we are done with our four cascade pages so stay tuned for part two of this tutorial where we are going to add these pages into the album and we're gonna finish decorating and adding all our little embellishments so i hope that you guys enjoy the tutorial please don't forget to visit js hobbies and crafts stay tuned for part two and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching bye bye